Hello, everyone. It looks like people are just joining the room right now. So we'll give it a just a minute or less to let people come into the room and then we'll go ahead and get started. You are just joining us now. We're gonna just give it another few seconds, let folks enter the room, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Looks like there's a few more joining. All right, well, I have 701. So we will go ahead and get started and let folks who are joining us jump into the presentation as as we go. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Stephanie Niles. I'm the Vice President for Enrollment and Communications at Ohio Wesleyan. Really happy to welcome you here tonight to our Bishop Plus session on academic services at Ohio Wesleyan. And we're really pleased to welcome Emily Lug, who's the Interim Director of the Sagan Academic Resource Center, and Stephanie Rowland, who, who is our Accessibility Services Coordinator. They have a presentation that they're going to share with you. Some of you have submitted questions to us in advance. We thank you for that. They will answer those questions during the presentation, or I may ask a question or two to get the conversation going, but we really want to hear from you. We wanna know what your questions are, Please use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. You can submit your question. We'll, we'll share that question um, with our presenters and ask them to respond for the benefit of, of everyone. Um, and we will wrap things up no later than eight o'clock before if the conversation uh, concludes. So let's all turn things over to Emily and Stephanie. Good evening, um, I'm Emily Lug. Uh, I'm gonna start by kind of giving you an overview of uh, the academic services that we offer in the Sagan Academic Resource Center. Um, multiple things um, are located in the same office um, within uh, this Academic Resource Center. So here's a list of what we do offer. Um, the Writing Center, Quantitative Skills Center, the Academic Skills Center, Accessibility Services. Um, we do offer a departmental tutoring program um, as well as Bishop Access. So we'll go kind of individually through these to kind of give you an overview. Um, something that applies to all of these, um, except for Bishop Access, that's an additional program uh, that we will talk about during this meeting today. But the Writing Center, Quantitative Skills, Academic Skills, Accessibility Services, and Peer Tutoring, those are all included in your tuition. Um, those are services that are considered walk-in. Uh, so anybody can make an appointment anytime. Um, there are a few requirements for accessibility services as far as documentation and those sorts of things that Stephanie will get to in a few minutes. Um, but the rest of these services all are at no extra cost to you. Um, and so we, as we say, uh, we recommend you start early and come often um, to use these support services. So we'll start in uh, with the Writing Center. So what is the Writing Center? Um, at your time, at, during your time at Ohio Wesleyan, you will have a lot of writing, just like, you know, you're probably used to some writing in high school. Um, you know, writing in a liberal arts college is pretty common. Um, and so we have a support offered to you um, for every type of assignment for any type of writer. Um, so a lot of students, I think, come in thinking that these support services are only for maybe people who aren't doing well or who are struggling um, or are not a good writer. We hear that a lot, you know, I'm, I'm coming because I'm not a good writer. Well, in fact, these support services really are for everyone. So anyone who's doing any writing on campus, everything from a response paper to a senior thesis seminar paper and everything in between. Um, so, so are we experts in all of those subjects that you may, you know, come in with music, art, science? No, um, I actually started at Ohio Wesleyan as a part-time writing tutor and some of the papers I read, I didn't necessarily know the material, um, but we can focus on your writing. Um, how do we make it more clear and effective? And if I'm someone who doesn't know anything about it, can I tell you kind of where my understanding level is based on 
your paper. And so um, any that's what, exactly why any type of writing goes. Um, that also includes applications, cover letters, resumes, um, you know, internship applications, um, graduate and professional schools. We work on a lot of those types of applications. Um, also opportunities to study off campus. Um, there are a lot of times to write proposals and grant proposals and things like that during your uh, time at Ohio Wesleyan. And so the Writing Center um, is available for support in all of those things, including even, um, you know, personal writing. We've worked on, you know, poems and, um, you know, different types of, uh, you know, play writing and things like that. So anything goes in the Writing Center. Um, quantitative Skills uh, Center is for um, their select math classes. Um, and at your time, during your time at Ohio Wesleyan, you are required to take um, one Q credit is what we call it. So a quantitative uh, credit. And that's not necessarily everybody's strong suit. And so we recognize that um, there is a need for support in those classes that you see there on your screen. So some of the entry level beginning math courses. Um, we have both professional and peer tutors available. I should have mentioned that. We have that in the Writing Center also. So we have professional tutors as well as other student um, peer tutors. So that's the same in the Quantitative Skills Center. Um, so, so all of those classes listed there do have a quantitative component. So some sort of math component. So you'll see Astronomy 111. That's not necessarily a math course. However, it does have a quantitative skills component. Um, and so that's something that um, the Quantitative Skills Center could support you through. Um, as well as preparation for other GRE, sorry, Steph, I kind of paused, you're fine. Um, other entrance exams and that sort of thing um, that have a math component, um, we can support you through that center as well. Academic Skills Center, um, that's a pretty common one um, for um, incoming students. Um, we have a lot of first year students who wanna come in and just kind of talk about the transition from high school to college and um, you know, rethinking some study skills. And so it's an opportunity to sit down one-on-one -on -one, uh, with an academic coach in the Academic Resource Center and talk about anything that would relate to your study skills. So time management, note-taking, reading, reading strategies, test preparation. Um, you know, we can even talk about motivation, organization, um, you know, anything that will help you to kind of hone your um, study skills. That's something that we can sit down and personally kind of help you develop a plan for how you'll do that. So we do use an assessment called the LASI, um, the Learning and Study Strategies Inventory. And it does help us to kind of help you pinpoint maybe um, what you need to work on the most. So a lot of times students will say, oh, you know, I, I'm studying, I'm studying, and then maybe I'm not getting the grade that I, I feel like I should be after I'm putting in all that time. And so you can work with someone who can help you kind of figure out where the disconnect is or what do you maybe need to do uh, to, to change that outcome. And so we have a variety of tools that we can work on with you to help you really strengthen those skills um, uh, to help you become a better student. So another big program that comes out of the Academic Resource Center is departmental peer tutoring. So all of these support services, the Writing Center, Quantitative Skills, you know, those are all very, um, you know, kind of widespread as far as the type of classes that we can support you in in those other centers. Uh, departmental peer tutoring is more specific to, as you can see, certain subjects. So biology, psychology, astronomy, physics, computer science, modern foreign languages, um, anything that will require someone to have that expertise that we talked about the Writing Center wouldn't necessarily have in all of those subjects. And so we do this by hiring peer tutors um, who have sat in those seats before. And they've taken those classes and they know the professors. Um, and they can sit down and help you work through some of the issues or just to make sure you're on track even in those courses. And so we work closely with the different departments to uh, make sure we're hiring students who did well in those classes. Um, oftentimes they're majoring in the class that they're tut tutoring in or majoring in that department. 
And so we do um, offer that one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes in group settings, um, you know, uh, additional outside of the class support. Um, we always recommend, you know, you uh, go to your instructors for that information, but uh, having that peer tutor, someone who um, knows exactly what you're doing in those courses and has been there, we found is very beneficial to our students to really um, get to work it through with somebody who has done it already. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephanie Rowland. I am the Accessibility Services Coordinator. And I'm going to talk about accessibility services, and then uh, we're going to talk about Bishop Access. So accessibility services is a resource uh, on campus and every student with a diagnosed uh, disability can utilize accommodations. We're committed to providing accessible environment, academic accommodations and student support. There's many reasons for a student to get registered with, with the accessibility services office. Mental health, um, anxiety, depression, ADHD, a chronic health condition. I have a lot of students with, uh, with diabetes or IBS, um, learning disabilities, dyslexia, dysgraphia, even temporary, um, such as you break your arm or break your leg or bump your head while playing a sport. I can provide temporary accommodations while you're recovering from your injuries. So how do you get, so getting registered, this process starts very uh, simply. I just need, um, if you had accommodations in high school, a copy of your IEP or 504, or a letter from your medic, a medical professional that is currently treating you. And then once I receive the documentation, then we schedule a welcome meeting to talk about what you've used in high school and what you uh, could potentially need at the college level. The big uh, thing to, to know at this point is Although you had an IEP or 504 in high school, those don't necessarily translate to the college level. However, I do use that information as documentation and this and we put the plans in place to help the student help you get your accommodations. So accommodations do exist, just not the IEP or 504. There's a couple positive things about that. Uh, if you've had an IEP or 504 in high school, you knew every year you had to meet with your counselor, you had to talk about what you need, and you had to go through this big uh, discussion in order to change an accommodation that's not working. The nice thing at the college level, because there isn't a formal evaluation once a year, you just got to come talk to me, and if it makes sense, we can, we can adjust your accommodations. Things are very different at the college level. So we'll start you typically with the accommodations you had in high school, but they may not work at the college level. And so then we have to adjust. And so I'm always happy to adjust those accommodations as needed. Typically, uh, once you've decided to come to Ohio Wesleyan and you've deposited, you need to reach out to me separately. And at that point in time, we'll schedule a time to chat. Um, typically that can be done during orientation, anytime over the summer. I can even meet with you when you get to campus in the, in the fall. And typically if I do get connected with you in the summer, I'll follow up with you early in the semester in the fall, just to make sure you have everything in place. And we'll do some follow-up meetings too at, throughout the beginning of the fall semester to make sure that we don't need to change anything. So what type of accommodations do we provide? Exam accommodations, very similar to what you have in high school. Extended testing time, 50% is typically, some, some are 100%. The ability to take your tests in a quiet room. We have a testing center um, at our university. It is our OU testing center, but it's, uh, it's, it's geared primarily towards students who need that extended time. Our faculty are fabulous at providing accommodations. However, they don't typically have the time or the space to provide the extended time students need. So we have a lot of faculty that do utilize our testing center, which is a very quiet space. Uh, Note-taking assistance. So if you got a copy of a student's notes in high school or your, or your teacher's notes, we have some uh, different supports that we can put in place at the college level, some apps, uh, some internet apps that we use, and uh, even getting a copy of another student's notes. Attendance and deadline modifications. Uh, this one is very geared towards specific um, disabilities and how it could impact attendance and deadlines. Uh, this one is also um, geared toward, and, and we have, this one is, is a little bit trickier because 
at the college level, we move quite fast. So you might spend half a year on one subject at high, in high school. Well, you're going to spend 16 weeks on one subject at the college level. And so getting behind is not always, is never a good thing. And so, you know, this is a community conversation with you and your professor and myself, just making sure that you're staying on track. But if you have a disability that impacts that, then we can put some supports in place. Accessible media. So if you got your books in a digital text, a digital form in high school, we can do that at the college level. Assistive technology, there's some different apps and stuff that we can share with you. I also am responsible for the housing and emotional support accommodations. Uh, I'm kind of the gatekeeper of the housing and then the emotional support accommodations all come through my office. And then I also do a lot of consultation and ad advocacy. I talk with a lot of faculty members on a regular basis. They contact me all the time to talk about particular students and how they can support those students in the classroom. And if you have individual questions or if you have more, need more information about any of these resources, um, we're gonna have plenty of time for Q&A here in just a little bit. So we have one other program. <clears throat> so as Emily had said before, we have uh, the Writing Center, the Quantitative Skills Center, our Academic Skills Center, our Peer Tutoring, and even my office. These are all resources that are provided through your tuition at Ohio Wesleyan. The Academic Skills Center is a great resource, and this is for a resource for students who just need that on occasion check-in or just that one time or two or three times where it just need to help them um, get started, get a plan, and then they can go from there and just move forward. The Bishop Access Program is a fee-based program that provides one-on-one -on -one academic coaching for students with executive functioning disabilities, which include, but not limited to, learning disabilities, ADHD, and mental health. This program, and we'll go into, is program geared towards um, all four years. Our first and second year focus is mainly on those academic skills and just um, creating those resources and helping you get those skills. The third and fourth years focused is on is about what's next. So you know how to utilize these skills, how what's gonna happen once you start looking towards the end of your academic career at OWU and going into graduate school or going into an internship or going into full-time employment at the end of your third and fourth year. Students can participate in this program semester by semester. We encourage students to, to go for an entire year because there's a lot that we do, we spread out throughout the year, but students can participate semester by semester. Um, and, and so we encourage you, especially that first, first, the first year, it's really important that you think about staying for that full year because the first semester is really about figuring out where you're at and how to use the resources that are available. That second semester is when we really start to hone in on those academic skills. Emily, I'm gonna let you take this next slide. Sure, so here are kind of some of the program highlights um, to kind of give you an overview of what uh, is included in that kind of a program. So the academic coaching sessions are probably the most valuable piece. Um, it's a one-on-one -on -one, uh, weekly, often bi-weekly meeting, sometimes more than that, um, just depending on what the student needs at any given time. But those are one-on-one -on -one meetings with your academic coach. So you are assigned a coach um, who is your point person uh, for this program. And you would kind of call it your support network. So your academic coach in this program would be kind of your point person for helping you with a variety of things on campus. Um, we also do a series of workshops. Um, we kind of uh, tailor them to, you know, the specific needs of different populations within the um, program. So because it's a four-year program, you know, some students have different needs. Um, you know, our first year students have different needs than our fourth year. So we do focus those workshops um, you know, for a variety of needs, academic skills being the top priority, um, time management workshops, test preparation workshops, motivation, things like that. But then we also uh, welcome in some campus partners to help us out um, as we're doing a presentation skills one this week. Um, we've done um, effective communication before. Um, we've asked our international office campus studies office to come in and talk about study, study abroad. Um, and so just a, a wide gamut of uh, different topics um, for our students. And those are only available for our Bishop Access students. 
Uh, we also do have a dedicated study table uh, time each week. Uh, this semester, we were able to bring back the in-person study tables, which we weren't able to do in the fall. So we're really excited to be able to offer that set time uh, where our students can come in. We try and uh, connect our students with the peer tutors uh, during that time. So ideally, students would be able to come to our dedicated study table space that we have in the library. Um, again, only for Bishop Access students. And at that time, hopefully they can either do some studying or uh, arrange a time at that uh, location to meet with their peer tutor. Um, we do some secondary advising. We um, are not advisors to these students. Um, I do happen to have a few advisees who are in the program, but they're not my Bishop Access student too. So, so we um, are very well-versed in academic advising, but we try and support them through their registration, um, but still point them to their academic advisor. Um, and so each student, um, you know, has a different uh, need, but just um, as, a, as another level of support while you're registering, um, we're able to kind of give you some other uh, tips and things to consider as you're choosing your classes. Uh, we do send home some mid-semester reports, um, you know, to you as the student um, would be the focus, but then we do involve parents quite a bit in this program, or or I should say as much as, or as little as makes sense. Um, and so in those reports do have the parent copied, um, mostly just as a FYI, this is how your student is doing. Um, and it's a good touch point for us as the coach to touch base with the instructors. So we really do have a better handle on kind of where a student is um, at any given time in the semester, especially around midterm. So, um, and we do communicate with parents. Um, like I said before, you know, as much or as little as makes sense. Um, you know, we the goal of this Bishop Access program really is autonomy. So we really do want students to work towards um, building those skills and being autonomous. But we also recognize that sometimes. Um, you know, there are things that we still need to get the parent support. Um, and as long as the student and everybody's on the same page, then um, that communication um, is, you know, definitely tailored to the student. Um, and then again, at the end of the semester, um, kind of just sending a report um, to the student to remind them, you know, all the good things that they've done this semester and then all the things that maybe we're going to continue to work on the next semester, reminders about what our plan is moving forward. And again, that's kind of an FYI for the parents, um, but, but really an overall touch point um, to make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, one thing to make sure that we highlight is that you do have to be registered with Accessibility Services to utilize the Bishop Access Program but you do not have to be part of Bishop Access to access your accommodations at any time. Um, we have students who, we're, who will, will be with us for their entire four years. We have students who come in just for one year. Um, we have students that are come in and, and they stick around for two years. And at the end of that second year, they feel confident enough, but we don't really lose them. We still see them. They still stop in and see us when they need something. They still have access to the writing center and the math center and the general tutoring on campus. And then they'll still stop in to see us because they might have a question about their academic skills as well. And so we don't lose complete touch with them. They still, they, and they still, we're their go-to person. Uh, we, we were their supports for two, three years. And if they don't know where to turn to, they're gonna come to us first and we can help get them connected to who they need to connect with. And in case anybody is wonder, wondering, our academic coaches are professional staff members that are hired and trained to work with students with disabilities. Right, that is the end of our presentation. So we can um, hopefully, we, hopefully we answered some of your questions that you had, but please feel free to, uh, to uh, ask, ask away. Yes, so put your questions in the Q&A, but we do have a few that have come in already. And, and as I said, there are a few that were submitted earlier. So let's start with, does Ohio Wesleyan accommodate students with service animals, specifically dogs? So the answer to that is yes. Um, if you're not from Ohio, this is a great question for somebody from California. Service, so we have two, we have, there are three types of animals. There are, there's a service animal that is covered by the ADA who is trained to mitigate the symptoms of a student's disability. There is emotional support animal, which is not covered by the ADA, but is covered by how um, the, the 
Fair Housing Act. These animals are only permitted in the student's residence hall room. These animals are pets that help you feel, help um, alleviate, alleviate uh, the anxiety and the stress that you have coming home and being able to cuddle with your cat or your dog at the end of the day is a wonderful thing. Service animals are permitted to go anywhere on campus. Service animals are trained and um, they can attend classes. They can go wherever they want. And I hate to point out California, but in California, a support animal encompasses a lot of things. And this has been something that's, that's, that's come up a few times for, for me. So yes, we do have service animals on campus. We have emotional support animals. A service animal, there is no, there is no big process for it. Um, I would need to have a conversation with the person bringing the service animal to campus. They have to be able to answer, answer a couple questions. If it's an emotional support animal, we do have an application process that goes through me. Great, thank you. If I decide to, to take a gap year, will my IEP from senior year of high school still be sufficient? Yes. Now that is for Ohio Wesleyan. A lot of, so, so my biggest advice to you is no, no, depending on what school you're going to, it's really important that you talk to their accessibility services office. Every school provides accommodations, but every school utilizes different requirements for documentation. For me, yes, that is absolutely fine. For Ohio Wesleyan, that's absolutely fine. Take a gap year and your IEP will still matter. But for other schools, they, they follow a different guideline in terms of the ADA that require a, a three-year or five-year um, re-up. Re and then that being said, this is probably more information than you need, but if you are going on to graduate school, then there's a whole nother conversation about updated documentation. Another question, is there a freshman seminar or other routine time that all first-year students meet with academic advisors and or peer mentors throughout their first year? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do require an incoming um, freshman first year course. It's called UC 160. And um, it's not um, necessarily, it is run by um, faculty members and it was taught by faculty and staff actually. Um, so the person who would be instructing your UC 160 class wouldn't necessarily be your own academic advisor. However, um, they would be able to kind of um, support you, um, you know, with questions or concerns, um, but you would be assigned your own academic advisor uh, who would be separate from that course. But um, part of the UC 160 uh, curriculum is talking about advising, registration. Um, there's a lot of support in that class really about, you know, just transition to college and first year Ohio Wesleyan things. And so that's definitely part of that. Um, as far as peer mentors, um, uh, there, we do have that available actually in the Bishop Access Program. We do have peer mentors through that program, but as far as on a more widespread basis, um, you know, there isn't necessarily something structured uh, that way, but a lot of the times the UC 160 instructors re reach out to other people on campus. So I do know they've had, um, you know, upperclassmen students come to their classes and have, um, you know, different panels and things like that to answer questions. So there are definitely uh, some op opportunities for that. Thank you. Another question, is there a summer pre-college program to allow students transitional support prior to the fall? For example, can a student stay over in the residence halls, eat in the dining hall, experience clubs and activities? I don't, I know that in the past there has been a summer bridge program. I'm not sure if we have that, if it's gonna be this, this year. Um, I don't think we did it last. That's right, because of COVID, we weren't unfortunately able to offer the bridge program. Bridge program is about a three week program that students are invited to apply to towards the end of their senior year in high school as they're making their decision to attend Ohio Wesleyan. Um, and 
they are then selected to do so. It's usually a group of roughly 20 to 30 students who have participated in that program. We have a new director of the office that has administered that program in the past. So I know that right now there are conversations underway about this summer. Clearly we need to take into consideration uh, whether or not we can safely house students on campus during the summer and, and provide the same level of service that we have in the past. But keep your eyes out if you are an accepted student and you end up um, deciding to choose to come to Ohio Wesleyan, we will certainly keep you in the loop if that opportunity is going to be available to you. Typically, and, and we're not um, too late at all at this point. We typically made that application available to students in first of April and, and, and uh, they knew by the end of May whether or not they were accepted to the bridge program. That program took place in sort of late July into early August prior to the start of the traditional year. Another question that has come in, um, uh, you all mentioned uh, among the many services and, and support systems that you provide to students, um, providing uh, students who have dyslexia with particular support. A question had come in about that. Can you talk a little bit more about particular or specific support services that you would provide or how you might work with a student who is dyslexic? Absolutely. So <clears throat> dyslexia, so depending on the, the resources the, that the student used at the high school level, it most likely is going to carry over to the college level. So getting your books in an accessible format, being able to use a computer to type essay exams, um, being able to have the books read out loud to you, being able to have your exams read out loud to you. Um, these are all very common uh, accommodations for students with dyslexia. But that being said, every student with dyslexia has different needs. Um, another one that seems to pop up is foreign language substitutions. And we do have that process at Ohio Wesleyan. That, it, that goes through my office and the registrar's office. It's a, it's a special permission. Uh, and the way that that works is you submit documentation to me about whether or not you were exempt from foreign language in high school, or if you did take foreign language, what additional supports you used in high school to get through your foreign language courses. And then I take you the documentation that you have. I write up a, a, a statement. It's sent to our academic standing committee who then makes the final decision. If approved, then you take culture-based classes versus the actual language-based classes. And we have a list of, I don't know, 15, 20 culture-based classes that they that you could take in, in lieu of the language-based courses. Sorry, I lost my ability to unmute there for just a moment. Um, uh, Stephanie, you mentioned, I think Emily and, and Stephanie, you both mentioned that most of the services provided by the Sagan Academic Resource Center are included in the cost of tuition, but there is a separate cost for Bishop Access. Is that right? Yeah. So the, the, so the Bishop Access program is $2,700 a semester, and that includes the one-on-one the -on -one academic coaching with a professional, with their, your professional coach. That includes, and, and, and the biggest thing is we for the peer tutoring, we identify the classes that you're going to need additional support in even before you get to campus. And because we know in general that if we know that you're not strong in math or you're not strong in writing, that if you're taking math, uh, the general uh, statistics course or the econ course, we're going to get those resources set up even before you get to campus and we're going to help you get connected to those those peer tutors and we're going to make sure that you stay connected with those peer tutors so we work very closely with the peer tutors we work very closely with you and we also adjust as needed we this semester we've had many times where the student met with with the peer tutor one time and realized hey you know what i need more support and then a big midterm is coming up. So then we threw some extra, we provided some extra tutoring hours for that student to prep for that, for that, uh, for that exam coming up. Um, and then also the workshops, having um, access to a peer mentor to talk kind of one-on-one, -on -one, providing that secondary uh, advising. So this is all additional support. And the other big thing is we communicate directly with your faculty, your coaches, um, we can communicate more directly with your parents. They, um, and so there's much more one-on-one. -on -one. We are creating autonomy,
but we know um, getting started that because you utilized all of these resources in high school, we know that you can do it. It's just a matter of ma- helping you navigate until you uh, until you can figure out how to do it at Ohio Wesleyan. And so this program provides a lot more of that one-on-one support. Wonderful, thank you. Next question is what will freshman orientation entail? Why don't I take a first stab at this and then Stephanie or Emily, if there's anything you wanna add to it, please please feel free to. So in the past, we have had a summer orientation, a, a, a one day on campus experience for students and then a welcome week and campo woo that occurred just prior to the start of the traditional academic year. Of course, that was disrupted this last year due to the pandemic. We did create an online orientation experience for students to complete during the summer. We will do that again this summer, um, just out of um, uh, uh, utmost precaution and and wanting to keep the full community safe. But we have had more time to refine that online experience. And I know my colleagues in academic affairs and in student um, engagement and success are working now on that experience. And students will receive more information on what that will entail uh, in the coming weeks and months. There will, of course, though, be a welcome week. There will be a Camp Owu experience. We are excited to be able to offer that. We actually did with modifications um, offer that last year and, and, and intend to do the same this year, assuming circumstances permit. Um, Camp Owu is a, is a two-day experience where students choose from a couple of different tracks, uh, adventure, wilderness, service. They get to know a smaller uh, cohort within their class, have some experiences both on and off campus in the community and beyond, um, and challenge themselves in some new ways and, and get to know members of our community during that time. And then there's opportunities, of course, to meet with their advisor, um, ensure that their registration is complete, um, audition for a choir, all the things that you might expect, learn more about clubs and organizations. That'll take place all during that welcome week and in the first weekend or two after the start of the academic year. Emily, Stephanie, anything you'd want to add from your perspective to that? All right. So there are no, well, let me ask one other question. If you have any other questions, submit them. I just have one more, which is, Stephanie, you mentioned short-term support. Um, one has a, an injury or concussion. Can you say a little bit more about that, how you might support a student who might have that short-term injury? Sure. So um, there, there's many different ways. So if a student receives a concussion and they're out of class for a few days, you know, I can provide some, um, some deadline flexibility with that, help a student uh, make up an exam if they miss it. But also, There's typically a a recovery time even after the concussion that slows the processing. So we add some extended testing time in there until they're till they've recovered from their concussion. And this could last two weeks, three weeks. It could last the whole semester. It really just kind of depends on what they need. Um, If a student um, hurts their dominant hand in any way and they can't write, then we put some support services for testing as well as note taking in there. And, um, and if, you know, if you're, if you injure your leg and you're on crutches, uh, we can put some other supports in there. We, uh, we can move a classroom so it's more accessible. We can get you a parking pass so you can uh, drive across campus instead of hiking across campus on crutches. If you don't have a car on campus and you have a friend that has a car on campus, we can get your friend a temporary parking pass to get you to and from. And so there's lots of different ways we can provide accommodations and support. It really is very individualized in terms of uh, what you need at the time. Very good. Another question, what kind of specific help do you offer for note taking? For example, could I take photos of the board with my phone? You absolutely can. Uh, We have a great uh, app that we use on campus and students love it. Any student can use this. It's not necessarily an accommodation. What makes it an accommodation is if you're in a class that doesn't allow technology. The program is called Otter and it's a transcription slash slash recording app. And what it does, it's it's a cloud-based, so it records to the cloud, but you can also put the app on your phone. And so you can record the lecture and it gives a transcription of what's being said. And then you can download those transcriptions and make a study guide out of it. 
uh, you can also go back later and listen to the lectures. Now you can't share the lectures with anybody, the, the, the lectures, but you can share your notes, you can create study guides. That seems to be, you can also get a copy of another student's notes. Um, that seems to be going to the wayside quite a bit because it's very difficult to read somebody else's notes and understand what they're talking about. But if that is something that you would need, it's definitely something that we can put into place. But as long as you have um, note-taking as an accommodation, you can absolutely use your phone to take pictures, but there are other resources as well that are better. Thank you. The very last question that I will pose, and I'll actually answer it first, is can I contact the Accessibility Services Office before I'm admitted to Ohio Wesleyan? And I would say yes, absolutely. We refer students all the time to Emily and Stephanie so that students and their parents are ensured of getting the specific questions they have about their particular needs and the ways that they need to be supported. We want to be sure that your questions are answered and we want to make sure that the experts are available to you to do that. But perhaps Emily and Stephanie, if you want to wrap things up by talking about communication with you and, and how individuals can contact you in the future or now with additional questions. So I'll, I'll start. Um, yes, please. I highly, highly, if there's one piece of advice I can give, give you, Highly, highly encourage you to speak with the Accessibility Services Office of every school that you're considering. And you absolutely, I've met with, I don't know how many families over the last just couple of weeks of just thinking about coming to Ohio Wesleyan, been admitted, wanted additional information about the support services. The support services for students are just as important as your ac academic classes, right? And so if I can, if I can help navigate you through this process and provide those academic resources, I'm happy to do that. I meet with a lot of families uh, throughout the year and I enjoy doing it. It's, it's, it gives me the opportunity to provide information about my office and the resources available, as well as you know, give the student the opportunity to learn more about what resources they could use, even if they don't come to Ohio Wesleyan, what resources are available and what, where, what, um, what questions the families should be asking as they're talking to other schools. Emily, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I'm absolutely feel free to reach out to either um, Steph or I about any questions. Um, you know, I know after you get a lot of information, sometimes you think of that question, you know, after the fact. So feel free to send us an email. Um, our emails are there on the screen for you. And, um, you know, if you have any questions about specific um, you know, centers that we talked about or support services, please, you know, no question is silly. Um, we would definitely love to chat with you and make sure that you felt like, you know, you had the right support that you needed, um, or if you have, you know, something specific that you think um, would be beneficial to you, uh, let us know. Um, and we definitely are flexible and um, would like to talk to you, um, you know, about what else we can uh, support you through at your time at Ohio Wesleyan. Very good. Thank you so much, Stephanie and Emily, for being here tonight. Thanks to all the participants for joining us. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions and have a great rest of your evening. Thanks again. Bye-bye.